Hi, this is my project on Hamlet in Mr. V's English class. Chances are you already know this because you're watching it in Mr. V's English class, but I'm planning on posting this on YouTube so you may see this without that benefit. Now down to business. Hamlet, as you probably know, is a play centered around the protagonist, Hamlet, on a quest for revenge. On his way, he'll need to find evidence to prove the murderer's guilt, confront his mother about her remarriage, resolve a questionable romance with Ophelia, go insane, come back, and accidentally murder more people than Chernobyl. Now one of the central themes of the play is revenge. The plot itself is a double revenge plot. Well, it's a triple revenge plot if you count Fortinbras, but nobody really cares about Fortinbras because one, he's from Norway, two, the person he's avenging isn't actually in the play, and three, he's still alive when the curtain drops. There is a fair amount of similarity between young Fortinbras and young Hamlet. To start, both are troubled youths who have been prematurely forced to take stock of life because of a tragedy in their lives, both spend the majority of their face time focused on getting revenge, and both succeed in the end. However, while the culmination of their actions and their motives are fairly similar, their paths are fairly different. Hamlet spends the entire play floating around contemplating love, death, suffering, and revenge without actually getting revenge. To be fair on that point, he does kill or cause the death of half the cast before the end of the play. But out of 11 deaths, Claudius is the ninth. By Act 4, I honestly thought Hamlet was just trying to judge Claudius to death. Fordenbras, on the other hand, raises an army, establishes a pretext to enter Denmark, takes over just in time to find out that everyone he was hoping to guillotine is already dead. Actually, does anyone else think it would be interesting to see a play or movie showing Fortinbras' struggle against some corrupt or out-of-touch politicians in a series of political moves, culminating in his surpassing the political influence of his father, then setting forth to reclaim his family's honor by invading Denmark? It wouldn't be as good as Hamlet, but I think it could be fairly interesting. Fortinbras and Hamlet are fairly contrasting characters. Unlike Hamlet, Fortinbras seems to be all about actions, actions, actions. But since he's present less often than Ferris Bueller, it's hard to tell for sure. Moreover, in Fortinbras' treatment of the corpses he finds in Elsinore's main hall, he shows that, unlike Hamlet, he believes that the body is an integral part of human identity. Which nicely brings us to my next topic, mortality and human identity. So, it's no shock that in a play where the main soliloquy is the protagonist contemplating suicide, one of the central themes is mortality. However, the approach to mortality is surprisingly idealistic. When I say idealistic, I mean that Hamlet acts as though human identity is independent of material things, most importantly, the human body. To Hamlet, to associate a body with a living identity only matters when the person is alive. For example, he points out how a worm may eat a king only to be eaten by a fish, which can be eaten by a beggar. To assume the beggar has actually eaten the king is ludicrous, because the flesh does not make the king. The mind makes the human identity. Moreover, just before Hamlet's duel with Laertes, he solidifies his support of this idea when he anthropomorphizes his own madness, claiming that his altered mental state means that a different person was in control of his body. Got it? You are leasing your body from the universe, and what makes you you is your mind or soul or spirit. If you're particularly attached to your body, Hamlet is laughing at you. Oh, small tip, if you're writing a book, play, or other literary piece, and you want it to be popular for more than a decade, you have to make your protagonist fairly progressive. If future generations can relate to the protagonist, then future generations will continue to read your work. Back to mortality. So when Fortinbras finally gets some time on stage, he decides to show respect to Hamlet's corpse. He shows that he is materialistic. To him, the material world does affect our identity to some degrees, so by showing respect to some of the major influences in Hamlet's life, like his body, he's showing respect to Hamlet as a person. In conclusion, if you think about it, the protagonist is idealistic, but the materialist is the only person who manages to finish his agenda without dying. So you can draw your own conclusions about Shakespeare's personal views on the subject, but I think that Shakespeare was an idealist who realized that the world runs on materialism. I'm Peter, and these were some of my passing thoughts on Hamlet.